Hey guys, Winslow Bent here. I've got something really cool to show you today. It's a diamond T. As a Chicago boy, these things are near and dear to my heart. Diamond T was the only auto manufacturer from Chicago, Illinois. They called them the Cadillac of trucks. You see it coming down the road and you're like, oh my gosh, what is that? My friend Mike Holst came down from Yukon, Idaho in this truck. He's gonna tell us a little bit about this thing. Thanks for having me, Winslow. So this is a 1951 921 series Diamond T, which is the predecessor to the Diamond Rio. When you're coming down the road in this thing, everyone's gotta be waving at you. Oh yeah, everybody waves at you, thumbs up. I mean, this is such a unique looking vehicle. The big swooping fenders. Sitting still, it looks like it's going 60 miles an hour. It's very uh, aerodynamic. It's back before they started going wide in the nose, which just didn't look as cool. And so you're saying over time, these things just started getting wider and wider. Why is that, just more engine? More engine, which means they need more cooling capacity, so everything in the radiator's up front for airflow. I'm looking at all the details as I come along here. I mean, look at the badging along the driver's door. Yeah. This is so cool, and everything's here. I mean, the attention to detail, these swooping lines that go through the whole cab. You look at this and you go, there's no way it came from the factory like that. This looks like an extended cab. Correct, yep. So they made this model in a two-door model, and then they made it with the extended cab. So this would have been more of like your long haul or log truck or something that you could sleep in the back. You get in trouble with the girlfriend, you sleep back there. <laughs> that looks like some tight quarters. Is this a, a, a heavy truck? Is this a medium duty truck? This would have been your big girl. These would have come with a single axle or in a tandem. Tandem axle you'd use for heavier work. Yeah. Single axle version, you'd be in the city, you know, yeah. doing deliveries, yeah. things that had a, a lighter load. Yeah, exactly. I know you pretty well. I know whole truck parts. This is probably not the original engine. No, so originally this would have come with either a four or a six cylinder gas motor with a manual transmission. So it wouldn't have moved out of its own way? No. Currently this baby will cruise 65, 70 mile an hour down the road, so. And how'd you do that? So we actually took um, a bus motor and transmission and put in here a Cummins 8.3. Uh, I think this one's set at 250 horse, four speed automatic, and then it has a three speed Browning auxiliary box. A real man could probably shift that on the fly, but I'm not one of those guys. <laughs> I put her in high range and we just cruise down the road. <laughs> the guy that fabbed all this stuff together uh, was a good old boy from Yukon, Reed Lemons. He was a house mover. He actually dug this out of a ditch bank. He was moving a house, saw it over there, and his love of trucks, he had just restored many, many other trucks, and he right. said, I gotta have it. And that's probably why it says lemons on the that's license right. plate. He actually passed away about four years ago. We ended up with it, and we're cruising around and letting everybody see it and, and see his, his work. imperfect, perfect work. So he fabricated the flatbed on the back here, and then it looks like he got a hitch so you can do some towing. He can haul stuff. We throw grandkids on the back. It's been converted so it's air ride in the back, spring over air in the front, it has a valve in there, you can adjust it and uh, for whatever weight you put on the back. And I assume nowadays this is mostly just kind of light duty cruising around. That's right, just a parking lot princess. Well let's take a better look at this thing and maybe we can take it out for a little drive. Sounds great. All right, here we go. When you get into the eight liter and above is when I think diesel trucks really start sounding good. It's like I'm sitting on top of a subwoofer. Just rev this thing up a little bit. Yeah. These old trucks weren't designed to have long conversations in them either. It was just one dude with a pack of Chesterfields just sitting here smoking away. And, <laughs> and if you notice, there's no radio. Yeah, you don't need a radio with the uh, A3 Cummins. That is the radio. Not sure which fuel gauge works and which one doesn't. The empty one or the full one? <laughs> I think we're about to find out.
I'm digging the power steering, man. Remember that we might not be able to slow down as quickly as you guys. All right, we're chugging up toward Grand Targhee Ski Area. I mean, right off the top, this thing has absolutely more power than it needs. Like a lot of these trucks with Allison transmissions, it's not until you get to like third, fourth gear with the torque converter locks that the truck really takes off. It's pulling pretty good right now. When the turbo spools up, I mean, you are absolutely gone. I wonder if that's a prescribed fire up there or uh, something's going Let's wrong. See if they got it. I would think so. I mean, this time, this time of year. But I love the seating position. I mean, sitting up here nice and high, looking down that hood ornament. This truck, I feel like I could drive this all day. It's nice. You don't have to go see a chiropractor or the dentist <laughs> after you get done driving it for a while. No kidding. How'd you get doing this? Is this like, is it a family gig or what? In the 1930s, my grandfather was actually a dairy farmer slash mechanic on the side. He'd always fix everybody's things and uh, he just kind of acquired a bunch of old trucks behind his mechanic shop. The mechanic shop kept going, but he also started just selling parts off those old trucks. Fast forward, you know, 30, 40 years, my father now kind of started taking over in the 70s and now we have 40 acres of truck parts, 30 plus employees. Was this in Yukon? In Yukon, yep. So you guys have been there, you guys have been there forever. Yep. That's very, very cool. And it's great to teach the younger generation because it's kind of a dying breed. The grease monkeys, the mechanics, the backyard guys, they're just, they're not there anymore. Here's some more kids up here. See if we get away from the kitties, maybe we can give them a honk. <laughs> yep. But so far, I am very impressed with this thing. Yeah, with well, this Cummins motor and Allison, and then the air ride, where it's got air ride rear and partial front. Yeah. It, it cruises very well. You know, I would have no problem cruising through Yellowstone. How fun would that be? It would be a good time. It's freaking awesome, man. And perfectly perfect. And perfectly perfect. That's a good name for this segment. This is the imperfectly perfect. 51 Diamond T. Wow, Mike, thank you so much. That was a great time. This thing's the real deal. I mean, it, she was well behaved the entire time. Absolutely an incredible truck. Like, I feel like I could drive this thing anywhere. They don't make them like this anymore. No, they don't. And, you know, it takes a special kind of person to keep them on the road. And I really appreciate what you're doing. I also appreciate all the help you've given my, my business. You know, we need a lot of oddball, <laughs> car parts. We appreciate the friendship. And if you like what you've seen today, please subscribe to my channel and be sure to click that notification bell. That way you'll get notified when new content comes up. We're going to be having lots of great stuff. If you like this, subscribe.